Thomas stood at Farquhar, the top station of his branch line. He had run round Annie and Clarabel after the morning journey and was enjoying a short rest before the run back down the valley. His driver and fireman stood beside his cab talking to the guard who'd brought startling news. Did you know that the station master was burgled last night? He was asking. Thomas's driver shook his head. You don't say, he exclaimed. I didn't know he had anything worth stealing. He's won cups for gardening, exclaimed the fireman. All taken, and then the scoundrels have the cheek to pinch his car to carry them away in. Not that new one he's so proud of, said the driver. The guard nodded, and at that moment the signal rose to show that the line was clear. The driver and fireman climbed into Thomas's cab. The guard blew his whistle, waved his green flag and got into Clarabel, and Thomas set off. By the time they were through the tunnel, the train was running nicely. Road and railway were beside each other here, with only a stream between them. Thomas remembered his race with Bertie the bus. He'd only won because he could go through the hill, while Bertie had to go over it. A flash of colour on the road ahead caught his eye. He tried to go faster to look more closely. Steady, Thomas, said his driver. There's plenty of time. Can't we get closer to that car? panted Thomas. It looks like station masters to me. Lots of cars look like that, laughed the driver. But he opened the regulator and they began to draw level. There were two men in the car. They waved when they saw Thomas and tried to go faster. That's the car, all right, Thomas, said the fireman. And those two must be the thieves. But we can't stop them, and they'll be gone long before the next station. We need pencil, paper, and something to put a note in, said the driver. We'll throw a message out at the next signal box. Quickly, he wrote the note, and they put it in the fireman's empty lunch tin. Then, drawing ahead of the car, Thomas whistled to attract the signalman's attention. They slowed so that the fireman could throw the box up to him, and as they went past, both driver and fireman shouted, Police! at the top of their voices. By now, the stolen car had gone well ahead, and Thomas did not see it again. But the signalman telephoned police headquarters at once, and the thieves were stopped at a roadblock about ten miles further on. That afternoon, the fat controller travelled in Annie to Farquhar. When he got there, he and the station master climbed onto a porter's trolley. They told the passengers the whole story, and the station master thanked Thomas, his driver, and his fireman for their prompt action. The passengers cheered loudly, and they cheered even more when they heard that the station master's gardening cups had all been found undamaged in a sack in the boot of the car. A long time ago, said the fat controller, holding up his hand for silence, Thomas showed how valuable he is to the smooth running of my railway. I am sure you will all agree that today he has once again proved himself to be a really useful engine.